getting into your book and obviously building off of what you just said, your first chapter, you begin to speak about how, you know, whether we love our jobs or we don't, oftentimes we just kind of run on autopilot. You know, we go from task to task to task. Um, but this also has impacts on how we make decisions. Um, can you talk a little bit about the theories and the, the scientific reasons behind what, what is actually happening at that point? Yeah, well, so here's why I think it's so critical to understand just how much time we spend on autopilot. And by autopilot, I don't mean that we're not conscious of anything, that we're just robots. What I mean is that we're, we don't need to be fully conscious of all the things that we might have to get to. and it, We can be operating relatively expertly, essentially. That uh, this, is, this is a general principle about how the brain works, that uh, we, as we learn, as we become experts, we find ways to do things mentally such that they require less mental effort. And one of the, one of the important ways that we do that is to be able to hand off a lot of that processing to parts of the brain that are evolutionarily older, um, they tend to be more towards the center of the brain, areas such as the basal ganglia for people who care about the names of these things. And these are areas where very well learned, I mean, it can, be, it can be a quite expert thing that you've learned. You know, I can be in meeting mode where there's um, a lot that I've learned about how to listen to people, when to speak up, um, how to frame a meeting that if I've done it many times, I don't need to be consciously thinking about all the different components of it. Right, it's re I'm, I can be on autopilot because I'm in that mode, right? And we have, you know, a classic one that everyone will have experienced is, you know, you're driving to work, right? And you get there and you can look up and just say, oh my God, how am I still alive, right? You know, like you didn't have to consciously be thinking about every step of the way. And we do that to some degree uh, when we get involved in any kind of a task. And this is a good thing. I mean, this is, this is what expertise means, is that we get to the point where we don't have to be consciously thinking about every step. A great plumber can look at something and just quickly have a sense, this is going to need a replacement part, or this is something I can fix, and I have a hunch how. Right? So it's, that's the kind of thing that we rely on when I say autopilot. So you know, we can think about, we can start to think about, uh, instead of, instead of you know, how do I how do I break out of autopilot? How do I understand when I'm on autopilot and when I'm not? So the, there's the classic advice, right, that you need to do what's important, not what's urgent. And I don't think there's anyone who would disagree with that. Uh, the thing is, the real challenge, I would say, is that it's actually not so hard to know what's important. If I asked you when you were on vacation what really matters for your career, you could tell me, I should be doing this and this and this, right? But you sit down in front of the computer on Monday morning and there's a million things you start just reacting to. The real challenge is in understanding when we have the mental capacity to really be able to take stock of all that's important and make a deliberate choice. That we actually, when we're on autopilot, we don't have as much capacity to do that. It's very difficult to just deliberately, willfully somehow break out of autopilot. What does break us out of autopilot, though, is when we come to a mental crossroads. There are even some researchers who argue that the whole point of consciousness is to make a decision when autopilot fails. <laughs> right? So, for example, I'm sitting there, I'm working on a paper, right? and my wife walks in and wants to talk about our plans for the weekend. I really genuinely want to do both. There is no autopilot that can handle both. I'm at a crossroads. I need to bring on new re mental resources that I haven't been using. They tend to involve parts of the brain that are in prefrontal cortex, parts that are evolutionarily narrowly newer, parts that uh, are vastly different, vastly larger in humans than in other species. And uh, they are critical for being able to deliberately, consciously think through all of the elements of something. So we have ways. There's, uh, it's been argued that a part of the brain called the anterior cingulate cortex uh, works in, at, at times like an alarm system. When we do come to a crossroads, a conflict, to wake up, if you will, or to bring online more of these prefrontal resources, making it possible. So we're actually in a different state. Uh, we're recruiting different neural resources when we come to that crossroads. Now that doesn't, most of the day is on autopilot. But at the end of a task, or maybe when you've just been interrupted, which we usually hate, but actually it can be a real gift if you capture it, right? Or if you just 
you know, plan an interruption, you know, in your, in your calendar, you can put it. That, but when we come to one of those points, suddenly we're much more capable of stepping back and remembering what's important and making a deliberate choice about what to do. It might feel like you're wasting a lot of time because you're totally aware of all of the unproductivity that's going on and how uncomfortable it feels because you're aware of more things at that point. You just want to be productive. You want to get going. It could last for five minutes and feel like an eternity. You get started on autopilot on the wrong thing. You start checking email. You could be gone for an hour and a half. Time really gets wasted when we start on the wrong task. Time doesn't get wasted in those moments when we're feeling unproductive, trying to figure out what to do. So we need to learn to capture those, recognize that those are, I call them decision points. Those are, those are rare, special moments in the day when we have the ability to think about what's important and make a choice to do it. That, understanding that interplay of how the brain works can really provide a, a tremendous resource, I think, in terms of being able to actually do what's important by the end of the day and not just what's urgent. Tell us what impacts this has on a person who's actually at work and mm -hmm. how is it that they can utilize a technique like this? So, um, well, one of the things that uh, I've tried to do, it was very important to me across the whole book actually, was to identify things that were not gonna require extra work to do because for me that would be a non-starter, right? Something that's gonna help me manage my time and my productivity that requires extra work is just Right, that's, that's not gonna work. Um, it's also critical, my wife is a doctor, uh, and, uh, and so she has a very <laughs> limited schedule. She, has, she works a lot more than I do, right? And so, so I wanted it to be effective for her as well, right? So really, I think that's an extreme case. So the ways that this can be applied in, let's say, a work context, and I think a few different examples of different types of jobs can help. So um, there is one where, let's say, a computer programmer, right? Now this is actually a type of work where it's very easy to get on autopilot, right? And you're programming and you keep having things that keep grabbing your attention and you're sort of in this loop, right? And so it can, hours can go by, right? And there can be some productivity there, certainly. But you can also easily spend a lot of time working on elements of the coding that's not important. So for that, for someone like that, where autopilot could actually run for four hours or even eight hours, right? For them to take advantage of it, they're going to need to build in some, once they understand just how important it is to help them really think about how to work on the important challenges, right, by the end of the day, is to build in some breaks where they're, they force themselves to stand up and step away for a few minutes until they can remember that. For someone else in more of a, a leadership managerial position, they're likely to be in meetings throughout the day. Every single time a meeting ends, they're at a crossroads. Suddenly, they typically need to quickly check their calendar. What's next? What do I, who do I owe? Oh, I have 15 minutes. I want to make use of it, right? That's the, the tempting thing. Or I have five minutes. Let me just quickly check email. If there's a very important email you know you're waiting for, of course, look for it, right? But the ability to say, wait a second, this is a rare moment in the day when I can step back and think about what's important. How do I want to get out of this day really succeeding, right? Taking a few minutes right at that point, when you have those, that psychological distance, those increased resources, so knowing that, planning for that, that is immediately when that meeting ends, you're going to take a moment and step back until you can remember what's important. Before you look at that calendar, before you look at that to-do list, before you think about making use of the time, I keep wanting to use air quotes for that, right, because I don't think of it as useful, right, uh, then you know, then engage in what's actually important. And you may decide, yeah, right now is a great time for me to check, just catch up on some emails. There's nothing important right after this. It's just a routine meeting, whatever, All right? And, and I'm already covered for, but probably a good pro pro proportion of the time, you're gonna, you're gonna recognize other things that are important. And, you know, and we could talk about, you know, what would a doctor do in that context? What would it, but I think when you start to get different types of work, it's some of them will lend themselves to, interruptions or having a crossroads periodically, in which case it's about learning to capture those, planning ahead to take advantage of them. And for others, uh, if autopilot is likely to go on, then it's about expecting that you're going to need to build in some of those breaks.